to another educational time together here. And uh, my name is Ryan Dorn from Brainswell Media and thrilled to have you a part of one of the most common questions that I get continuously as an Internet-based consultant uh, to the publishing or media world. And it's how do I price adding space on my website? It doesn't matter if it's a magazine, newspaper, television station, radio station. It you know, really doesn't matter. When it, fundamentally, we've got a few things that we all have in common. So as publishers in, a media, uh, in the media space, we have some really important things uh, for us to consider and, and work through today. So I'm thrilled that you're going to be here. First of all, the Internet is not a trend. We know that online ad spending is up. We know that web dependency is rising. Why is web dependency rising? Such a thing, uh, for all of us in this particular media or medium is because people now more than ever before are becoming very reliant upon Internet and mobile devices, which so many of them drive content from the web. Good for the salespeople, though, is that web ignorance is flat. What does that mean? It, it truly means that to educate an advertiser, we don't have to spend quite as much time educating them on the basics or the fundamentals. We can spend a little more time on some advanced advertising techniques. But remember something, as we've talked about before, you need to think like a teacher. You need to sell like a teacher. If you think about a, a kindergarten class or even an eighth grade class, you want to give kids that are learning from you small bits, small nuggets of information, make something that they can easily understand, but give it to them in bite-sized chunks, way you don't choke them. The same thing when you're talking about advertising. Okay. Fifth, waiters are declining. What does that mean? It really means, you know, the people that uh, hate advertising when it, in regards to the Internet. Most business owners are very receptive uh, to the fact that they need to be doing something on the web. Now it's up to us as a business to sell them on that fact. So how do we price it? And that is the fundamental part and the challenge and the conversation that we're going to have today. 79% of all adults use the net. 87% of working adults have access. What does that mean? That means that we can serve up great video ads, great banner ads, flash ads, video that is dedicated to our sponsors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Interesting fact, though, 8 in 10 magazines are online. 2 in 10 are still not engaging in this medium. Isn't that crazy? 8 in 10 magazines make money online. And a lot of that comes from the fact that our pricing is all over the board. And what we want to do is we really want to think very carefully and really tight about this whole process. Okay, so what do we, where do we first start? We need to understand some terminology, that things that we need to, some data we need before we can price things, okay? The first is, I really want you to stop referring to your web traffic in terms of hits. Now, granted, you know, we've talked about this before, and I'm only going to spend a couple seconds on it, but still, so often, I hear senior-level sales reps and publishers alike Talk about hits. And here's the thing to remember. Hits in a relevant way to track traffic. I mean, just go ahead and take a look at this entire web page. It's one page impression or one page view. But so many pieces to put together that page. And every time the server is dinged or every time the server is hit for information, it back, brings back a graphic or it brings back text or it brings back banner ads or your logo. And every time it does that, it records it. And each one of those little recordings is called a hit. That's why we want to know how many page impressions or page views are shown by our website. Why is that important? If we don't know how many pages we're serving, it's going to be really tough to price it. So we talk about that traffic in terms of impressions. Every time a page is displayed, one single web page is displayed to a user, that's one impression or that's one page view. So if you use Google Analytics, which we're going to look at here in a couple minutes, they're called page views. That's how many pages have been viewed by the general public. Now, we're not talking about unique users yet. We're not talking about total users. We're not talking about click-through rate yet. We're talking about just the basics of how many pages are viewed by the general public each month in regards to your website. Now, if we know that number, and we know there's three banner ads on every single page, what does that mean? If we served up 21,000 pages to the general public in 
given 30-day period, okay, 1,000 pages, served to the general public, and there were three ads on every page. We would simply do 21,000 times three, and that would be the base number of how many ads we're serving, 63,000 ads a month. Now, you might have four ads on a page, maybe five. What you're going to do is simply take the number of page views, ad spots that you have available for advertisers, and multiply it, and it's going to tell you how many ad impressions you have available each month, how many times can you use one single advertiser for a whole month. Let's be, you know, just for sake of simplicity, that we only have one advertiser. And that advertiser is going to run in every single ad spot on our site. We would take 21,000 page views, or page impressions, and we take it times three, that ad would be served up 63,000 times in a given 30-day period. Do these basics because without these basics, I can't give you a price. See, that happens a lot of times in the publishing or media space. What happens is we go and we look at these courses that we take, or we go look at our web traffic, and we just guess. We just guess based on what? What a lot of people used to say, oh, what will the market bear? Well, what the market bear is a is great factor, but we have actual good case studies to give you a really good model to follow. Next, I want to know click through rate. Why do click-through rates and what are they? Well, most of you understand that a click-through rate is tracked. Every time someone clicks on a banner ad, it records it in your delivery system. So, if you have 100 banner ads for a particular customer, and one of those banner ads was clicked on out of that 100, so you served up 100 banner ads, and one was clicked on, that means your click-through rate is 1%. How did I get that? One divided by 100 one percent. Now, something to note of and keep in mind, and you've heard me say this before, but the national average click-through rate, two five percent across the board, encompass all media sites, commercial sites, business sites, any site that serves a banner ad. The national average is point two five. Now, why is that important to pricing our advertising on our website? It is because if you have a banner position on your website, say it's the top banner that gets a lot higher click-through rate, to charge slightly more for it. That's why it's important for us to monitor click-through rates. What affects the click-through rate? Position on the website affects it, and also the size of the ad. And later on in this presentation or this workshop or this class, whatever you're calling it, we're going to show you a graphic that's going to better explain that. Next piece of data we need to give an accurate price to our ads on our website. We need to know what total users are, and we need to know what our unique users are. I mean, really, honestly, we need to know what our unique users are, but you know, that's, that is very much akin or related to or sort of like circulation of our magazine, okay, or our audience or whatever. So we really need to know our unique users. So let me give you an example. In the time, you have 150 total people. Now, guys, let's just say his name is Bob down here below. He comes to the website a lot. So the, the web server has recorded 150 people coming by, but back 50 times all by himself. So in total, the web server is recording 150 visits, total visits. Actually, only 100 people, unique people came by because Bob, he really likes you. <laughs> Bob has come by the website 50 times in and of himself. Why are the two numbers different? Why are they important? Well, again, web server is a computer. It's going to record total visits for you. Well, that doesn't matter to most advertisers. We want to know exactly how many unique individuals are coming to the site. In this case, 150 people came by, but one guy came by 50 times all by himself. So that means our unique user count is 100 for this particular example. You don't want your total user count. Because most advertisers don't want to know that. They want to know how many unique individuals, how many eyeballs, came by. In this case, it was 100, so you really need to know that. Where do you get these numbers? Well, let's look here at this Google Analytics example. It's really important for you to follow me very specifically on this example. You'll notice at the top left, right here on the top left, you'll see 58,757 visits. Guess what? That's your total visits. The total visits, look right here, 37,000. That's your number of visitors. That's your unique visitor count. We'll also find that on page two of your report. 
58,000 total visits, 37,000 unique individuals. Look at the difference between those two numbers. So counting that, you want to make sure that you look at the unique visitor count. Okay, next on your Google Analytics, page views or page impressions. This particular website served up 274,799. Now, I know some of you that maybe um, listening to this are online-only publications, or maybe you know you only print your magazine or, or, or newspaper maybe four times a year or something like that. So web traffic is really important to your business, right? So you know you had 37,000 unique people come by. They looked at 174,799 pages. Now, in the example that I gave you, there were four, there were three ads on every page. Do is take 274 times three, okay? And you know because uh, you know we can look at that, and we know that three times two is six. That's approximately 600, almost 700,000 ads. That were, how did I get that number? Again, I take the page views times the number of ad positions on a website. Now you might be in a circumstance where your website has maybe four ads on the front page, six eight ads on the second page, and then it's really up to you to look at your Google system, your double-click for publishers ad delivery system, your ad dealer system, your ad dealer system, OpenX, AdSense, whatever it is, how many total banner ads are served in a given month. Why is that important? Guys, you need this data to be able to accurately price your online product to know the bounce rate, not for this exercise. Do you need to know the average time on site? Well, yeah. I would actually like to know because what if you have traffic that's coming to the site and they're sticking around for 8, 10 minutes? If the average is a minute and a half, you know, you really want to know, you know, how many people are, are coming by the website. So it's important for you to look at the average time on site because maybe you'll charge a little bit more. You know, remember, as we talked Exercise in this training class, things every website is not created equal. With the example of most websites are created with standard HTML in some format. But the thing to remember overall is that there's so many different variables. So you may be asking yourself or screaming at the computer, Ryan, get to the price. Here's the thing: I can't give you the price until we accurately analyze the data, and that's why so many publishers and media companies come to me for advice because they say, I know what idea where to start. Well, today, I'm showing you this is the data you need to be able to build that pricing. Let's take a look at this a status website. Keep in mind, guys, I'm using Google Analytics, which obviously is free uh, to all of you. Is Google Analytics the Bible? Is it the golden child of Google analy of analytical programs? No. It's not. I love Google. I think Google's a wonderful company. They've done more for the Internet than, uh, you know, than most companies could, could ever even think of doing. Here's the thing to remember. Google Analytics are concerned Conservative. Why are your numbers conservative? Well, really because Google to make sure that they're as accurate as they possibly can be, and Google is going to filter out as much traffic as 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 they deem to be bad. So, for example, let's just say that there's a lot of traffic coming from uh, you know a particular uh, computer system or an IP address, and if they think it's a spammer um, or it's a spider or something like that, then they're just going to they're just going to cancel that off your traffic. Well. I recently had a publication that contacted me, and they said, hey, our traffic is way off. Our logs are reporting one thing, and Google Analytics is reporting another. And so let's take a look. And what was happening is Google was filtering out a lot of web traffic from a local military base, which in this particular case was a lion's share of their tra traffic. And we got a hold of Google through the Google Webmaster Tools. We also could adjust our filters online, and uh, we were able to get that uh, corrected a year to take a look at your server logs and then compare that numbers, those numbers uh, to your Google Analytics. Make sure you have a base number to work from. So this final example of Google Analytics, 59,163 visits. That's not what we want to know. We want to know unique visitors, 36,000. 200,000 total page views there, second on the left. People 4.23 pages per visit. Is that important in this exercise? It is not important in this exercise. It is not. Average time on site might be important if this number is extraordinarily high. Now, when you're selling, this data all means something different. Okay? If you're a salesperson, you're going to use this data in a different way. We'll talk about that, and we have in some other classes. 
Okay, so look up the class that um, has to do with selling using statistics. Okay, we we did that uh, class a few months ago right here. Okay, all right, let's move on. The four things that we need to know, they need to know, you need to know, we all need to know. Total page views, total users, total ad impressions a month. You need to know what sizes you're offering because sizes price differently. Different sizes that are available on most websites that follow interactive advertising bureau standards. Okay? First, 160 by 600. The click-through rate on a national average is only 0.14%. Ugh, not very good. Wow. 300 by 250 ads. Check that out. 300 by 250 ads, national click-through average uh, rate, click-through rate as an average is 0.37. You know, that's almost 12 to 15% higher than the national average, which was what? Does everybody remember that? The national click-through rate average was 0.25%. 0.25%. On this was Marketing Sherpa. MarketingSherpa.com is a great resource for you. I'd encourage you very much to go and, and check it out. I'm going to the 728 by 90. 728 by 90 banner ad, you see that graph right here. Okay, fourth from the left, 0.27%. So just of the national average. Now, a lot of you are running these 468 by 60 ads on your website. And why are you doing that? Well, a lot of you are doing that because ad size is small. Um, it fits within most designs. Here's something to remember. Those sizes, I wouldn't say they're becoming passe because, quite honestly, from a national perspective, the 468 by 60 is still quite popular. In the media space, though, it is not. For radio stations, newspapers, TV stations, magazines, newspapers, etc., it's not. The most popular size actually is 300 by 250. All these uh, sites, media sites, have a 728 by 90 at the top and the bottom. If you don't know sizes you should uh, look at uh, to, to look up serving, go to the Interactive Advertising Bureau website. Okay, I think it's ab.net. Okay, and then what you also want to do is look at other, whether it's competitors. Or go to bigger markets, uh, itself, if you're a city and regional magazine or whatever, and then you know look at other uh, websites there. If you want to see some pretty cool web websites, um, you know, go look at the Association of Alternative News Weeklies. And folks have some really, really cool uh, websites, and I believe that the organization there is um, uh, aan.org or aan.net is their website. So the sizes, the 728 by 90, as we talked about, is at the top. This 160 by 600 is actually kind of going out of style. So if that's one of the sizes you use, um, you know, you might want to consider, you know, changing it maybe to, to something else. Here, though, there's 300 by 250. This fits on this website. It fits on most websites. These ad sizes are easy to design for. Advertisers really like those sizes, and they sell for a premium. Check this one out here. This one is actually a video ad. And how do you do video ad serving? Well, you can uh, serve that um, through most of websites that have what are called VAST tags, V-A-S-T. So that's Victor Alpha Sierra Tango, VAST, V-A-S-T. Okay? And those VAST tags are something you might need some help with. Uh, reach out to me, and I can help you with that. Still popular at the top of the site is the 728 by 90. Why is that not getting as good a click-through rate as the 300 by 250? Because what's the first thing you do when you pull up a website? What's one of the first things you do? Scroll. You scroll down. What happens is this one always gets seen, or these get seen, and this one often gets pushed off the page. Remember something? I talked about this before. I love to put another 728 by 90 at the bottom of the website, every website. Uh, why? I like to run it as a bonus. So, you know, give me a call if you need more information on that, but that's why I like to like to do it. Here's another example of using a 300 uh, by 250 uh, up just a little bit higher than the page, almost in the same spot as the previous one. You'll notice the 728 by 90 here is right next to the logo. That's kind of cool. Um, remember something, if you're building, you know, revenue-centric websites, Build things left to right and top to bottom, so this is going to make the House and Home logo, um, great company by the way, left to right is going to be logo and ads, that means those are the two most important you know, things, and then um, you know, you've got the 300 by 250s here. So know your pricing, uh, as we determine our pricing rather, know your ad sizes, it's, it's really important. I'm going to come back to these things. Okay, let's talk about pricing the web. Okay, base model calculation number one, everybody ready? Okay, got your pencils out, sharpened. Here we go. If your total unique user count, okay, we determined that, right? Okay, if your total unique users is less than your circulation, then your rate, okay, should be X 
approximately 20% of the cost of a full pad in your magazine. Again, if your unique user count is less than your total circulation, price for one of your banner ads, just the base price, your starting point, should be about the same as 25% four-color full-page ad, one-time rate. Okay, let me give you an example. If your magazine is 25000 and your unique is 13000 if the color full-page ad is $1,200, and web ads should sell for around $300 per month. That's if you're doing it on a flat rate basis, which most media companies, they find success in selling the things based upon a monthly flat rate, which means you give them a certain number of impressions in a given 30-day period. Now, if you want to sell this based on a cost per thousand basis, then you to take the math that's here and, and go and divide your, you know, your total ads that you're serving each month by a thousand, and then just back into this number. Okay, talk to me if you need more information on that. Okay, so that's how pricing if your circulation is less than your unique users. So the base web rate should be around three hundred bucks. Now keep in mind, let's just say that okay, so your base web rate at your uh, website is going to be around three hundred dollars. Okay, cool, that's great to know. But if you have a banner ad that's you know in a particular pot spot, the click through rate is always 0.50 or higher twice the average, for it. Let's go to the right side of your website. Let's go look at one of these examples here. Let's just say on the right side of the website, this ad, say this ad here is going to sell for 300 per month. This one here might sell for 325 Well, why? Well, it's higher. Well, then wouldn't this one be sell for more? Maybe. It depends. What's the click-through rate average on this particular spot? Is it high? Is it really a great rate to, uh, Click through the average, well, maybe it'll sell for a little bit more. Positions within a magazine or just premium spots, like for example, at a radio station, okay? Your morning drive is going to cost more than middays. Why is that? Well, morning is listened to by more pe people. Sort of, there's a, a company uh, that's that there's the Gawker website. They actually base their rates, or they did here recently, on how much audience is actually seeing the ad, which is kind of a cool concept. Now, let's talk about if your total unique users is actually greater than the circulation of your magazine okay, audience. That, um, you know, that happens a lot, actually, in some circumstances. If that's the case, if your total unique users is greater than okay, your total circulation, then you're going to be almost the same rate as a full-page ad in the magazine. What? Did he fall out of your chair? <laughs> yeah, think about it. If you have more people reading your website than are reading your magazine, your web for advertising needs to at least be the same as it is in the magazine. Otherwise, what? Otherwise, it means that you uh, have you are saying to your advertiser that my online readers are less valuable than the my magazine. That's just not tr true. That's just not true. People looking at your website than are reading your magazine, you need to at least be charging something similar to charging the magazine. Let's just say, for example, your circulation is 55,000 and your users is 90,000. If it's 1200 bucks to run a page ad in your magazine, your base web rate should be somewhere around $1,100, somewhere pretty darn close. Oh, Ryan, you're crazy. Nobody would pay that. The reason they're not paying it is because you're not demanding it. That's the reason why. Or <laughs> you've been giving it away for free so long, so then you need to use the at least the base model example and grow from there. Or, or what you oftentimes can do in new advertisers, you need to start quoting a higher rate. Old advertisers are not going to pay that rate. As new, they're never going to pay that, that rate. Okay, in most cases, or you'll lose them. But the new folks don't know any better. That's the one thing that's, that's kind of challenged overall that makes me kind of crazy is people say, oh, I've been giving it away for years. How is it that I can charge you know, for it now? Uh, here's an answer for you. Start charging for it. Why well, all my advertisers will leave? Well, so basically you're not prospecting. You're not reaching out for new advertisers. You're not out on the street talking to more new people. You're just using the same people over and over again. You've got a problem with your sales process if that's the case suggestion is, you know, something pretty simple. Start shopping for it. You know, some of your folks are not going to renew. 
I get it. I understand. But there are a lot of other fish in the sea. So at some point, you need to put a you know a stick in the ground and say, listen, our web is valuable. Our web is valuable. We need to for it. A little bit more about that audience. Let's talk about Facebook. Example, you'll see where you can find your followers. Okay, where you can find your followers. Okay, and what you want to do is you really want to pay a, a ton of attention to and to these uh, number counts. Okay, it's really important. And the reason that is so unbelievably important is because you need to know how many folks are here, because you need to know how many people you have, so that you can charge accordingly. Okay. It's really important that you make that, that happen, and you pay attention to it. So how much are Facebook uh, mentions selling for? So what do I mention? If this was a live example, you'd click on the wall, okay, and the news feed, okay, that would appear right here, and then mentions that happen in between. L Magazine, which is this is the example I'm using here, um, is really, really great. You could actually go to Facebook and then just search uh, for L Magazine, and it will actually show their uh, – uh, website, uh, the Facebook page rather. Notice that on the left, how many people like them. Additional space mentions on websites like this and others sell for somewhere between a hundred to one hundred twenty-five dollars a thousand. Okay, so if you have a thousand fans and they'll be mentioned on your Facebook page, you charge between a hundred and one hundred and twenty-five dollars. So I wish you yes or no, because then I'd know for sure if you understood what I'm saying. <laughs> So if you've, uh, if you've got, say, 2,000 fans and your Facebook page and someone wants you to commercially mention them on your Facebook page, you would potentially charge a couple hundred bucks for that. Then you think to yourself, well, Ryan, why in the world would someone actually pay a couple hundred dollars for that? I mean, that just you know, doesn't make any sense. I mean, it's not really worth that, is it? Yeah, it really is. I mean, you have to think about something. When you as the admin put a mention on your Facebook page, it's actually emailed um, as you know to all of your uh, fans, and so that's a commercial advertisement being dropped into their inbox. So it's just like an e-blast. So you definitely don't want to charge less than you charge to send out your e-blast each month. You know the same uh, you know applies um, as we talk about um, uh, Twitter, because your followers, okay, in this case GQ magazine, seventy-six thousand. Some of you have two or three thousand Twitter followers. Make sure that you understand and you charge accordingly for those. The same pricing. You don't want to charge less than you're charging for per thousand for your e newsletter. So hundred and twenty five bucks a thousand. And I have five thousand names. Someone's gonna actually pay me five hundred bucks to you know be on my Twitter feed and on my Facebook page. Well, if they won't pay it individually, maybe they'll pay it as a, a combo social media buy. But guys, you know, you gotta remember something. At, at some point, we got searching for these readers. Advertisers out there, prospects, they're beginning to understand, hey, it's really important, uh, something that we need to pay attention to. And you're not a valuable audience. You know, you, you do, this, do this stuff for free all the time, and you've got to stop doing that. Now, let's talk about free versus bonus versus a part of the total media buy. $5, just, I'm making this up to be uh, have as, as an example. An advertiser pays five hundred bucks. They get in your magazine. They get two mentions on your Facebook page, and they get a banner ad for five hundred bucks. Um, that does not mean that the web is free. That's part of the package. So, in the background, as a publisher or general manager at your media group, what you need to be doing in the background is making sure that you're peeling off the social media contribution to that buy, the bank contribution to that buy. To that buy, here's what happens: I go in and work with uh, these different media companies, large and small. In the background, they're actually not peeling any of this off. And so what happens is in the end, the in social media get no credit. Everything goes into the print bucket. And so you're never able to say, man, look, our online you know, really you know, played a part of the total buy. So remember something. An ad on its own might be like, say, $400. Again, I make for an example. And then when you go and add on multimedia, you might raise the price to 500 but the background of your accounting system, if you don't peel that off, then a print ad is up to five bucks. The so print buy or print revenue is up $100 on that one particular ad, and that's really not the case. So in the, at the end of the day, it's really hard for you to be able to accurately price, 
track or give credit for the media components, you know, as an overall part of the particular plan. So it's really important for all of us to really make sure that we pay a ton of attention to these details. Anyone want to keep it simple. That's what I think is most important. You really want to ask yourself these questions. Do you know your traffic? I mean, inside and out, do you know your web traffic? You know, here's the thing. In most cases, nah, no. <laughs> most people, they, they don't. Do you get statistics? Do you get your statistics? Are you very uh, much able to understand them? Or do you need some help? Do you know your no total number of page views? Do you know your number of unique users? Okay. Are your salespeople talking in terms of hits instead of page impressions, ad impressions, unique users? What are the sizes that you offer? Are you offering the sizes that you can sell for the most? Are you sticking with these small ads that are blinking on the page, making your website look bad, that's not, not generating much money? Do you have a strategic plan to draw in more fans or total fans? Do you even know how many fans you have on your Facebook page? Do you have a strategy in place? I mean, having a strategy in place... It doesn't cost any dollars. Strategy in place is just really smart. It's a really smart part of your overall plan for next year, for the quarter. But no plan plan is bad. Any plan is better. So what is your plan to take care of this and price these things correctly? You know, it's just really important for us all to pay a ton of attention. Now, let's just say that you don't have much web traffic, <laughs> which is a problem for some folks, Okay. You need to tell your advertisers on what you're doing. You know, quality over the quantity. You know, you have niche traffic, which is, you know, absolutely, you know, outstanding. So it's, you know, it's important for you to understand that, you know, you've got a, a ton of traffic that's, that's really important. You know, you need to focus on the efforts that you're doing to drive traffic. What contests and promotions are running? See, it's okay if you have quality traffic. You know something, I mean, quality traffic, what does that mean? Quality is, uh, let's say that you're a trucking website, okay, you deal with trucking, okay, and people coming by the website uh, that are soccer moms, well, that's highly unlikely. You have targeted traffic related to a particular niche or to a particular audience. Now, some of you that, uh, you know, are listening in, you know, you have a fairly broad audience. You might be dealing with people, everybody within a city, okay, but that still is really important because it means you have very geo-targeted traffic. So an advertiser that's looking for that particular audience, meaning everyone in Chicago, that traffic, that's what you need to sell. You know, me is I want to package big. I want to sell total value. Now, what I don't want you to have happen is I don't want your total mindset, hey, I can only sell four things because I'm trying to keep it simple. I agree with keeping it simple, but you may need to package big. You might need to do prints. You might need to do banners, e-blasts, uh, a couple videos a couple of buttons on certain pages, a section sponsorship, an event sponsorship. I mean, package it big. Give them the, give them the world and charge them you know, a price for it. And people love that. I mean, remember something, guys. People are not you know, sitting <laughs> at their desk saying, wow, I just really wish that Ryan Dorn would call today and sell me an ad. <laughs> I mean, would that not be awesome? I mean, I don't know about you, but I've never had somebody, uh, when I've called them and said, hey, you know, it's – Ryan, you know, uh, wanted to talk to you about this and this. Oh, Ryan, who? Thanks for calling, man. I've been sitting here all day and waiting for you to call because I want to place an ad. I mean, it just <laughs> it doesn't happen. I do this every day just like you. If you're a GM on the call today, what I really want you to do is I want you to take a look at your pricing, use models that we talked about today, and make sure that how you're pricing it, make sure that you use those base model examples that how you're pricing it is in line with what's happening across the country. One of the things I didn't share with you is how did I arrive at this pricing model? Where did it come up with, come up, come from? Well, I work every, uh, every um, month uh, with about 55 publishers. I have a chance to speak with approximately 3,000 publishers a year. And the thing that always collectively comes across is that the banner ad pricing almost always in the web pricing comes back to the model that I share with you today. Almost always is about 25%, and that hasn't changed much. It may change a little bit as we start getting into more digital products. Not to talk about today. We didn't talk about digital editions. Quite frankly, there's not enough information out there for us to price them you know, really, really uh, adequately. Uh, but I think they're great, and I think there's some real pricing considerations there. Uh, we didn't uh, you know, talk about e-newsletters because that's another class 
class that we already covered. Um, so I had to get with you know um, get archives and and I find that class. And so overall, what I want to share with you is I believe fundamentally you're not charging enough, most of you, for your websites, for the banner ads that are on your website. And I really want to encourage you on your Facebook pages as well as your Twitter account to get in there, figure out how many people you have, focus on what you do to grow those folks, and then price it accordingly. You know, in the web, there's all kinds of advice that you may need. And remember something, as a customer of Shweki Media, everything that we do together is 25% off. So feel free to reach out to me. I'm a big fan of all the the, uh, the, the Shweki Media. I work with a lot of them, and I'm happy to help you. Also, don't forget, as a, a Shweki partner, your first 30 minutes with me are absolutely free of charge. Reach out, and I'm happy to help you. My name is Ryan Dorn. I'm the founder of Brainswarm Media. Founded it after 15 years in the mainstream publishing business. I know the business inside and out, and I would love to be able to help you. Thanks to all the fine folks at Shweki for uh, putting these uh, webinars up each month. Hope it's been helpful to you. Please reach out to the folks at Shweki. Let them know what you think. Provide some feedback uh, back. And also, let them know some topics that I can cover for you in the future. Take care. Have a great day, everybody.